49 seconds of logos. Well, based on the first movie that's based on the book that's based on a family stories. This movie should come with a disclosure at the beginning that says you shouldn't watch it if you're epileptic. No one in this house wakes up after the first shot except Jody. Did the demons forget she was there and subsequently forget to make sure she lost her hearing also? And since this door is a louver door, why was the light only emanating from the bottom and not the entire door through the slats? I've been to a lot of crime scenes. I've never seen anything like this. What? Multiple shootings by a deranged family member? Surely you have. And didn't you ever read In Cold Blood? Not even the original movie would dig low enough to make this pun. An ellipsis is only three dots. Please spell check your movie. <gasps> oh, God! Get it? It's a scary movie. Finally, Deadpool and Hit Girl together at first. This sucks. You're not kidding. Scrambled eggs are the easiest f***ing things to make. Does being in a beautiful bubble keep you from rarely having to make your own food? I'm genuinely asking. I have no idea. Mom, I'm 12 years old. What? Dude, you are clearly not f***ing 12. Four bedrooms, three baths, one site of numerous atrocities. George must have totally missed the giant moldy spot. If he saw this, the price might start to make sense. Also, demon possession. The house was built in 1692, at least the basement. Basement, torture cell for early Native Americans, who can tell the difference? This clock stopped right as the entire family got murdered because, you know, demons. There was a tragedy, a crime, a, a murder. <laughs> But, you know, we've moved on the whole town. It is a distant memory now. One thing that's confusing. Was the house murder-free up until the previous owners, or has everyone who's lived there since the 1690s been a victim? If so, the real estate agents in this town should really be charged as accessories. Well, houses don't kill people. People kill people. George Lutz must be part of that powerful pro-house lobby I'm always hearing about. This is a period movie, and a notable period song would be way more appropriate than whatever this is. You say your prayers? Yep, said them twice. This house has four bedrooms. The boys can't have their own rooms. What'd you pray for? If I tell you, it won't come true. I feel like Father Calloway would take issue with this kid confusing prayers with birthday wishes. Praying doesn't do any good. Not only did the remake excise almost all of the Catholic subplot, they explicitly made it kind of blasphemous. What is this movie trying to tell me here? The demons live in the ventilation system? Melissa George doesn't wake me up in the middle of the night for sexual exploits. It's generally inadvisable to throw a kid into the mix during a sex scene, even if that kid's a ghost. Also, Jody was shot in the head, not hanged. There has to be some afterlife haunting rule that doesn't allow you to fabricate the way you died to freak people out, especially while having sex. What's her name? Jody. Youngest daughter has an imaginary friend who is an imaginary cliche. You know, there are plenty of other little girls to play with in town, too. But Jody says they're all me. Did Jody previously have trouble with the other little girls in town? That would really suck to be unpopular and murdered. Ah, Abraham Lincoln! Is that Jody? No, that's someone else. Why would Chelsea know to draw him if it's a big secret who he is? Jody apparently wants to drop hints for things that will happen later in the movie. If this is some sort of 17th century torture device that was used in the sealed off basement torture chamber, how did Michael find it? The demons are slowly revealing things that will be important for later, but for now, don't make any sense. I found a babysitter off a board at the grocery store. And I found a doctor from a flyer left on my windshield. Where's Chelsea? Did they cut the part out where they looked around the house for Chelsea? Or did they just beeline straight to the boathouse? A kid with a red balloon? Is this the Criterion Collection? How did she get on the boat in the first place? Ah, the demon did it, didn't he? Billy, no. Billy, gotta go pee. Then go pee. That's not your brother's problem. Look, if the demon isn't going to do anything except watch the kids struggle with the sink, I don't give a <laughs> The spirits of the house do this because George is keeping it too warm in there, and <laughs> those chairs. Is this motherfucker Pennywise the clown? This is the clearest lake water in existence. Are we sure he's not in a pool? Obligatory Ryan Reynolds abs. Also here, 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 and here. This girl got shot in the head, but now as a ghost is being strangled by disembodied arms on the ceiling for a jump scare. The paranormal dimension needs to get their together. Also, is Jody some kind of rogue spirit that needs to be silenced in this version of the story? Otherwise, this just seems like another poor f***ing excuse for a jump scare. Your fully functional haunted house comes complete with a Darth Vader. Guess what I found in Billy's room. The spirits frame Billy for a rather innocuous crime. Amazing the exact right letters, except for that stupid K and catch, all happen to be on the fridge right now. And how many goddamn apostrophe comma magnets did they have anyway? It is my belief that the ghost kids in movies are being forced to run laps by some asshole PE teacher who died in a freak relay race accident. Any self-respecting parent with a prepubescent teen would make this girl put on a shirt or make her go home. They don't introduce the babysitter to the other kids, go over any other rules, tell her where they're going, leave an emergency number, or even explain that things have been slightly haunted lately. I guess since the Lutzes spent all their money on the nice house, they can't afford a nicer place like Sabaro's. So do you French? Is she really coming on to this kid? I know this babysitter's supposed to be awful, but scare seducing the 12-year-old boy while the other two kids are God knows where? A rifle. Back, 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 back! Delayed reaction aside, I'm guessing these kids also heard the gunshots we heard, or else the reactions are a little much. Right here. 
in these beds. I got to see the walkthrough. This house was completely unfurnished. I'm sure they brought their own beds. Jody's, what's the word? Dead? Talking like the Little Mermaid won't make this little girl like you. That little shit got me fired. This is not only the worst babysitter ever, but also one of the most forced characters ever written into a script. <laughs> this is a pretty f***ed up game of pull my finger. Also, I guess it's against the rules for humans to die in this movie. Why wouldn't Jody steal her soul or something instead of sticking Lisa's finger in her head? This is more gross than anything. Those louvered doors are pretty flimsy. A nice swift kick would easily break through those slats. Knuckles are pretty fine here, but in the next shot, these knuckles have been murdered. I saw Jody. Does the babysitter getting carted off to the psych ward mean they don't have to pay her? Goddamn babysitter's an idiot. Holy sh George is evil and correct. Good to see they kept the overabundance of firewood chopping in this movie. The fathers need a sexy task to substitute killing their family. That's what my dad taught me. His dad's not around to teach him that now, is he? George isn't going crazy as much as he's going dickish. Why is the mantra of the demon to catch him first? Does the demon foresee a moment in time where George will have to most dangerous game his family? Wait, I must have dozed off. Did the movie end and I'm now watching the beginning of Sweeney Todd? Kill them! How did he get out of that one? Was that just a hallucination or did he actually go in there? There's some pretty important info between what we last saw and this moment that we just cut right through. Person gets attacked while bathing in a horror movie cliche. That would be my cue to leave, but we are only halfway through the movie, so it's clearly not theirs. Why don't you give Dr. Stone a call? Then you should give him Dr. Stone's number. Wait, 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 wait. This is a psychiatrist. I don't know if George should be getting all high and mighty about seeing a psychiatrist. Proper mental health is important for everyone, especially if giant arms just tried to tear you apart while taking a bath. Mom finds out I'll let you out of my sight, she's gonna kill me. This family throws around so-and-so is going to kill me so often they might actually be aware they're in a horror movie. So that's actually Chloe Grace Moretz on the top of the house. Which, good for her. But man, what a sh movie for which to do this potentially deadly stunt. I gotta say, that's a great view. The hauntings might be worth it. Oh. Impossibly good catch there, Mom. This is such an awkward fall. She's got her hands in the air through two quick shots, then her hands are down by her sides. It's almost like in this shot, they were simply handing Ryan Reynolds a spare Chloe Grace Moret, just in case he needed some extra precociousness that day. Did Chelsea snap out of it as soon as she jumped? Now that she's not on the roof anymore, she seems normal kid scared of heights. Kathy left. Is Father Calloway known for his house exorcisms? Or did she just walk up to the first Catholic church she could find? It was a family. Lived here some time ago. The people we've met that were living in the area when the DeFeos were murdered, like the real estate agent and now this priest, are acting like those murders were in a distant past. It was just a year ago, right? George's film camera surpassed Snapchat facial recognition technology 30 years before Snapchat existed. By the way, this ghost demon is a total asshole for making 3.15 in the morning something that seems significant but really isn't. So the family got murdered at 3.15. Nobody has to be a dick about it. I understand that he's under the influence of evil spirits and everything, but it would have to be pretty strong to make me want to sleep in that basement. George kills the family dog. That's the sin. Also, you know what happens at the end of the original movie? James Brolin saves the dog. Let's remake Casablanca and have the plane shot down while we're at it. George Lutz is a terrible contractor. Let's all live here. He is literally blessing this mess. Why would a cross doorknob even be in a private home? And why don't the demons have a problem with it the way they do the holy water? Also, that's convenient that this particular room had a cross on the doorknob and the door locked in this particular way to have that cross end upside down. Were the evil spirits just banking on him looking into that vent? Or was it just a happy accident that he stood there so they could also knock him on his ass? Just like the original, the priest is a dick and doesn't explain anything before leaving. Also, you hired poor Philip Baker Hall for this bullshit. They gave Rod Steiger a whole character in the original. It's okay. I'm here. Zoom in a third time to make this sniffle really dramatic. Also, what is this, the 7th or 8th cue for them to leave? The other article about the pharaoh is copied and pasted twice on this same page. Or he murdered them after 23 years. Researching about the particular hauntings the lead characters are experiencing in a horror movie cliche. That pile of maggots is actually the first reasonable explanation for the fly attack. If info about this house was cool enough to be in this big-ass book, wouldn't there be people in this town that would keep it on some kind of historic registry and say people can't live in it because of its creepy historic past? He started a mission for Indians. He slaughtered them all. You know what? I'm gonna allow this haunting. Wow, what an uncanny transition. Gollum makes an appearance in a 2005 horror remake, proving that The Return of the King never truly ends. He still seems to have his wits about him somewhat, yet he keeps walking forward, even though everything he's seen so far is jumpy and creepy as shit. And he's reacting normally to it. If he was truly under the influence of these spirits, they probably wouldn't creep him out as bad. I got the first two pages, but on my first pass through, I thought the movie wanted me to read Taining the Land, and I had no idea what the movie wanted me to get out of that. I had to watch it three times before I saw Suicide. Line up your shots, bro. Tortured Indians on my land. Well, let's not get carried away. He tortured the Indians on their land. You read about how he slit his throat so that his presence would live forever. Somehow. 
Oh no, a light, my balance. Instead of immediately suffering a bloody and painful death, her hair jams up the motor. You can't rewind hair. Bad guy telegraphs his intentions to his family and the audience by making the coffins before killing everybody. They don't run to and subsequently break a window. George survives this. Also, good thing they never even started on the landscaping. You know who we haven't seen in a while? Pointless jump scare! Convenient chimney ladder is convenient. Also, is this a composite scene? What the hell is the kid on the left doing? I'm not for murder, but this guy was just swinging an axe at your son. It's a clean kill. Hurry, let's grab some rope. How about you run the f away instead, or at least shoot him in the leg? Don't kill me or I'll kill you! Nobody's dying today. Except when I crush your skull with a rifle, which movies tell me only knocks people out for a couple hours. Why are they going to the boat? Don't they have a car they can drive? Isn't that easier and safer, especially in this weather? Holy f**k, if someone told me that was gonna happen, I could've just skipped right to this part and gotten the whole f**king movie in two seconds. Why are we taking him? Let's just leave him here! This kid would be excellent at cinema sins. The only personal possessions that seemed to matter were a bear from a dead girl's coffin and a kiss poster, so there was really no reason. So what? She's dead. Movie that isn't even 90 minutes has 8 minutes of credits. Based upon a screenplay? Wouldn't it be THE screenplay? This credit could technically mean based upon Muggable Mary Street Cop. Rock, meet, bottom. Red Rock. Red Rock. Why don't you tell our daughter about it, honey? Janie, today I quit my job. <laughs> and then I told my boss to go f himself, and then I blackmailed him for almost $60,000 past the asparagus. Then put your little hand in mine. so juicy. Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. How's the peeping? Tommy? How's the peeping? Oh yes. Yeah. They float.